What's going on everyone and welcome back to another video. It's time to talk about the next Mario & Luigi title. We all, almost all of us, are hyped for the Super Mario RPG remake, but that doesn't mean I'm going to forget forget to talk about a certain other Mario RPG series. Today we're going to be talking about Mario & Luigi Dream Team, the first Mario & Luigi game on the 3DS. This is one of my first 3DS games I've gotten and boy, I really liked it. How does it hold up after nearly a decade? Time to find out. Alright, so let's start off with the plot of the game. I don't- I mean, we're gonna have to do this eventually. Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach, and Toesworth, which I will say right now, this is his very last appearance in a Mario title that aren't counting remakes and re-releases, so rip Toesworth after this. Um, and other Toads are invited to an island called Pillow Island, they took a higher balloon called the Pillow Blimp Board. However, something goes poorly wrong. Also, Starlo. Oh, yeah, you also mean Starlo, but yeah. Something goes poorly wrong. The blimp falls because, oh my god, is that. Who's that? <clears throat> yeah. And then, um. <clears throat> the blimp falls. Mario, Luigi, and others landed on are on Pillow Island, and um, we meet Starlo. By the way, cool, I guess. And um, yeah, something is going on though, because we meet someone called Prince Dreambert, and we're gonna need to find pillows throughout the whole island, and that's the whole point of the game. So yeah, Dream Team's plot is pretty interesting. Um, oh, and. Antasma, if I, yeah, that's what I said. Antasma and oh, what a shocker! Bowser tries to go for the Dream Snow to cause chaos. So now Mario and Luigi have to to save Pillow Island. So yeah, that's the plot of Mario and Luigi Dream Team. And I gotta say, I really, despite me, I funny enough, I have replayed the game again. But I will say, compared to the other Mario and Luigi titles, besides the next one we're talking about in a different video. This one kind of gets a bit of flack. I wouldn't say as much as as I thought, but <clears throat> it's there, but we'll talk about that later. Let's talk about the main stuff. So, the gameplay is pretty straightforward. I love the unique... I love the art style. And one of the major praise with this game is the art style, of course. I mean, <laughs> it just goes for a nice color kind of feel, which is the whole point of the game, honestly. And I also love also love in-game Mario and Luigi, how they look, honestly. So, that is already off to a great start. And the characters themselves are really interesting. We still have the unique characters. Save that for Paper Jam. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, unique characters and the music... I gotta say, a lot of people praise Mario Luigi Dream Team's music, and <laughs> yeah, you can't really blame them. The music is just as good as the other Mario and Luigi titles, and I can definitely say that this is easy. It's easily really that good. So yeah, but otherwise, we still have our usual stuff: jumping on enemies and combat. The combat, at least in the normal world, is pretty much the same as it always been. Using your hammer, of course, is always the same. With just minor adjustments and stuff, just in the, just in a new fresh coat of paint, basically. So we still have the same usual Mario and Luigi gameplay that we're used to. So everything's really good. Now we have a brand new gimmick involved in this, of course. Oh, but first off, we also do meet. Also, uh, Peach does get kidnapped later on in the story. Um, what a shocker. Um. One thing I will say that um, we do get a unique gimmick, which is the whole point of the game. This was released near the year of Luigi. You cannot talk about Luigi without bringing up this. I mean, of course, it's Luigi. Everyone loves him. I hope. <laughs> so, yeah, we did get Luigi U. We did get Dr. Luigi, which sure does exist. But then one of the big ones, of course, was um, Dream Team. And the whole point of the game was Luigi himself. Luigi falls asleep on a pillow. I honestly thought the plot of the game was Luigi not going on an adventure. He's just mostly going to be sleepy throughout the, almost the whole game and stuff. But no, um, he Luigi sleeps <coughs> and creates a dream portal. Mario can't do that, unfortunately. So Mario has to go inside Luigi's dreams in order to 
uh, freeze some pillows, basically. So, yeah, that's the whole point, and I gotta love this concept. They do try something different with the Mario Luigi series, and I do like the concept of the dream, of going into the dream world, and the difference between the dream world, the overworld, basically, you're kind of going, like, wherever you want, um, in, like, an open world 3D space or something, but in uh, the dream world, it's more of, like, you're playing a 2D game now, so you're still exploring and solving puzzles and all that, but... You're just going to Dream World and stuff, which and, and which is honestly really nice. And the battles there, the Dream World battles, I guess you could say, are really cool, honestly. You only use Mario, but if you attack with Mario, you have Luigi doing extra damage to enemies if you want to. And of course, we do have these special attacks. Bros attacks, we do have, and the Dreamy attacks, or Luiginary attacks, I should say. <laughs> um... The bros attacks are pretty straightforward, the shells, the fire flowers, we got some new ones too, which is pretty cool. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> um, which I do like, honestly. Not sure how I feel about them in um, Dream Team, though. Some of them, you, use, you have to tilt your 3DS in order to do them, which I guess it's a 3DS. They were going to introduce something like that eventually, so yeah. But otherwise, they're pretty nice, and the Luiginary attacks, basically, are pretty much the same as well. Are pretty much, you use Luigi to your advantage to attack a bunch of enemies. Luiginary Ball, Luiginary Hammer, a Luiginary Stack, I believe it's called. Like, there's a lot. I really love the Luiginary attacks. They're so fun to use, honestly, and they definitely give you a lot of stuff. To, they definitely make you do a lot of, feel like you're basically doing a lot of damage, so yeah. And, uh, I guess we'll talk about the areas themselves. I really love the look, and just like in the previous Mario and Luigi games, yeah, there's some pretty unique worlds, of course. I mean, what more do I need to say about the locations, honestly? Like, we have, of course, Wake Court, which I really like, Stripward Shore, which is one of my personal favorite areas. Some on woods, and the music is, oh my god, it makes me want to cry. <laughs> and, um... You know, we got some other unique areas too. We also got the Dream World too, which changes the music and vibe. You can basically, it definitely affects a lot of stuff. And also in the Dream World, there's stuff that Mario can do, and you're gonna need Lu Dreamy Luigi to actually do some unique gimmicks for you in order to actually progress through the story. So, yeah, I gotta say that Dream Team, I really love this game, and it's easily one of my personal, it's one of my favorite 3DS titles for sure. So, yeah, but even though I really love this game, oh boy, <laughs> it's not, I can definitely say that while it doesn't get as much hate or something, I don't know if hate really is a term, but it definitely doesn't really get the same repetition compared to the art titles. There's definitely some exceptions. The tutorials. Yeah. This game, the major criticism I hear with this game is, of course, the tutorials and you might not think this is bad because this has been a mario and luigi staple but no matter where you're in i understand if you this is your first mario and luigi game so maybe i understand but no matter where you're at you're just thrown with tutorials that you're gonna need to do in order to actually progress you can you, normally in the mario and luigi series even if you're even in the old ones you can just skip the tutorials if you know what you're doing and stuff but no matter what you're gonna be thrown with tutorials, no matter what. No matter how many times you try to want to skip them. Even near the end of the game, you still get thrown with tutorials! There's so many of them! Which definitely kills the pacing of the game, which is why it's pretty much the longest Mario & Luigi game in the series. Bowser's Night Story was long, and I don't know if I say it's a replayable game or anything compared to Superstar Saga, but at the very least, it does make the pa- the Bowser's Night Story pacing was almost perfect, it doesn't really bother you that much, but... Dream Team has pretty poor pacing, you can't even skip the cutscenes if you want to. The cutscenes go on, feels like you're stuck in a cutscene scene, like, forever, honestly, compared to other titles, so... I can't really blame them, the tutorials really just kill your mood of the game, and don't really replay it, replay it as often, so... Yeah. But otherwise, if you, get, if you don't really mind it, you're gonna have a fun time, honestly, so... Yeah. And just like, um... In other titles... You have badges, you have leveling up, and ranking up, just, I didn't, I don't know if I talked about that in Bowser's Story, you can rank up to gain some extra, either some extra health, power, 
or you know add extra badge or more gear so yeah there's definitely a lot uh to this game honestly so yeah but, but yeah obviously it's tutorials oh i didn't even talk about the giant battles if mario and Lu if luigi gets all scared you have to touch his l on his hat and he goes, and he's big! He's big Luigi now! That's right, these are the giant battles of this game. I said that Bowser's, the ba the, ba the giant battles in Bowser's side like, story are just okay. I felt like they could have been handled better, honestly, in my opinion. But I think the giant battles in Dream Team are honestly way better, to be honest. But, I don't know, they just felt a lot better to control, honestly. And they weren't really as tedious compared to um, Bowser's side like, story. Besides the final battle, but it's the final battle, of course. Speaking of final battle, um, I think I pretty much talked about everything with Dream Team. So, after finally getting to Neo Castle, after going through several challenges, you fight Dreamy Bowser. Holy shit, this music is so damn good. I cannot tell you how many times... I want to listen to this song. I wouldn't say it's as good as Bowser's Story's final boss, but oh my god, this one's definitely up there, honestly. After finally being Bowser, you grab the Dream Stone, and you escape Neo Bowser Castle, of course. And that's Dream Team. Also, you save Princess Peach as well. So yeah, Mario to Dream Team. Yeah, I really love this game. I still think it's as good as the previous three games. I think it's my third favorite in the series. Bowser's Story being my favorite, then Superstar Saga, then this game. I know it's pretty unpopular to have Dream Team higher than Partners of Time, but I don't know. I don't really have the best members with it, even though it's a really good game. So, maybe that's just me, I guess. But regardless, Dream Team is really good. Give it a try if you haven't, if you can get past the long tutorials. All right, that's Dream Team. Now what? Oh, no. See you in, like, fall for Paper Jam. Later, folks. Oh, God. Thank you.